Welcome to Elevated Everyday Living, a lifestyle podcast for those who want to be the main character in their lives. I'm your host, Elle, and every week I'll be chatting with you on a variety of topics, from lifestyle to beauty to fashion and personal finance. Join me as I give you all the tips to romanticize your life and elevate your everyday living. Think of me as your Nancy Myers coded big sister. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Elevated Everyday Living podcast. My name is Elle and I am currently sat in the toastiest room of the house. Let me give you a bit of backstory. Basically it is coming up to the winter months. We've just had the clocks go backwards. It's definitely winter now. I feel like when it gets dark at 4pm you just know that that's it. Autumn's over. Winter is here and I'm somebody who is a bit of a cheapskate. Anyone in the UK knows it's absolutely ridiculous at the moment when it comes to energy prices and I'm just refusing to turn the central heating on so even though I can see the dog's breath in the corner of our living room I'm like go put another jumper on love like it's not happening I am not turning the heating on anytime soon but we do have one source of heating which is the heated drying rack that's currently drying all of our clothes because there's nowhere else to dry it we don't have a tumble dryer and it's too wet and damp outside to dry it out there so because my home office is the room in the house that is not used that often I go in it pretty much every day because of when I'm working but in reality there's no one else that really comes up here it's the only place it can really live and it's kind of right next to my desk I'm literally looking at it in one of the alcoves but because this is a small room that's recently been renovated and the heating rack's just been on pretty much 24 7 drying off of our clothes this room is incredibly toasty so I'm just like oh I'm gonna stay up here for quite a bit (laughs) I might might just live here for the rest of the evening. It's so toasty. But yeah, I am being a cheapskate, guys. I probably will turn the heating on soon, but just, yeah, not right now. I'm sorry. It's just not worth it. Like, let's get into double digits of November and I'll think about it. But currently, absolutely not. Anywho, enough rambling. Let's get into today's episode, which is all about my Sunday reset routine. So something that I like to practice in order to get rid of the Sunday scaries and the Monday woes is have a really step-by-step routine every Sunday. It just helps put me in the right mind frame, ready to tackle work the next day. I'm someone who considers Sunday to be the beginning of the week. So Saturday night is really my Sunday night for most people. But just because it's like, there's not really much you can do on a Sunday because you're just preparing for work the next day. I just consider it the beginning of the week essentially um friday saturday is my version of the weekend so i like to have things in place just to make sure everything runs smoothly that i'm ready and prepared for the next day and i can just get myself ready to go my week doesn't look that scary everything's perfect we're all ready and raring to go now i will admit currently i have somewhat fallen out of this routine there's just a lot going on in life things have happened that have kind of topsy-turvied everything around but that's okay as much as i can i like to stick to this routine and i'm hoping to get myself back into full particularly during these winter months because I think it's really going to help with being sad and just getting over those winter woes of it being so cold and miserable outside and it's that weird time of the year where November although it's quite a lovely month I mean certainly for me it's my birthday month it's not really Christmassy festive time yet until later on so we've got a good couple of weeks where it's just cold miserable and grey and yay basically it's not a fun time to look forward to so hopefully you might be inspired by this routine to create your own Sunday reset routine so that you can get your mindset in the best place possible and get ready for the rest of the week and absolutely kick butt with it. So grab yourself a drink, a lovely cup of cocoa or a coffee or anything like that, unless you're driving, because I don't know about you, but I listen to podcasts like this when I'm driving. So please do not get cozy in the car. Absolutely concentrate on the road while you're doing this. But if you so happen to be listening to this on your break or after work or after school or anything like that, get yourself cozy. Let's get into it. And I'm going to talk you through pretty much my Sunday day, starting from the morning all the way into the evening. So the first thing that I do as part of my Sunday morning routine is get up and out of bed. I've found that I am not some that can just snooze the alarm once or twice. I am very much either getting up and out of bed or I snooze that alarm and I'm gone. Like I'm hours later, I will rise from the dead and the depths of my bed. For me, I have to get up and get going. Otherwise, I feel like an unproductive princess. And one of the ways that I've discovered that I feel really productive in the morning is when I wake up and get on my walking pad. Yes, I am one of those people who have now invested in a walking pad. I see all the TikToks and actually it's changed my life in a way, particularly when I work from home I find myself more energetic more productive when I get a couple of steps in on the walking pad I like to take a lot of meetings particularly there's one particular meeting we have every other week at work where it's just an hour it could have been an email but they insist that we join the call and do this team update and because we're not really participating in the call we're just listening to the updates what I tend to do is just turn my camera off get on the walking pad and walk for 
the entire hour. And then it's like I've got 5,000 steps in all in the space of having a meeting when otherwise I'd just be sat at my computer twiddling my thumbs, most likely scrolling on TikTok. So for me, it really works. And one of the things that I found during the week, especially when I'm working from home, because unfortunately I just don't have the time to fit it in when I go into the office because of my commute time, is that I will get up still in my PJs, go and make my collagen coffee, which is the thing that I have to have first thing in the morning. And I will jump on the walking pad while watching the latest episode of reality TV. So Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Potomac, New York, any one of those I will catch up whilst on the walking pad. And we all know the realities of it, which is exercise makes you feel better. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but it really does. I'm away. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to take the day on. So what I'm hoping to do, which is not something that I'm doing now, but I hope to bring this more into place. As I said, I'm very good at getting on the walking pad during the week. It's part of my working routine. And I really want this to be part of my weekend routine. So I'm hoping by starting the week on the Sunday, getting up out of bed, getting on the walking pad, catching up on reality TV or any TV series that I happen to be re-binging at the time with my morning coffee will just put me in the right mood for the Sunday and get me ready and raring to go. So once I'm done on the walking pad, I've had a shower, I've done my face skincare routine. By the way, I don't wear any makeup on Sundays unless I absolutely have to in terms of going to see somebody or in creating content or something like that. Once I'm ready and raring to go, this is when I like to tackle the house and get it cleaned up and blitz. This is not me scrubbing the skirting boards or really dusting or anything like that. Usually my husband will do a deep clean of the house on midweek when it's one of his days off and I will also come and incorporate some little bits of stuff. Usually the one thing that we do religiously is hoover and any dog owners, particularly those with long hair dogs will know you're pretty much hoovering 24 seven when you have a puppy but that is the sacrifice we make for their adorable little faces to be in our lives but what I like to do on a Sunday is what I call a power hour and literally I'll just usually it's not even an hour I spend in each room it's less than that but I like to just dedicate a good solid bit of time in one room and I like to just clear all what I call the surface junk so you know those things like we leave at the bottom of the stairs because we hope one day they will migrate upstairs and go to the rightful place that's what I do on my Sunday is I move it up to the right place it's where I go and pick out where we put all our letters to one side in the kitchen I'll go through the mail I'll get that sorted I'll clear off odd coffee cup that's been left on the side on the table I'll pick up some of the socks that have been randomly left there it's just all that surface junk that just gathers up as people are living and I like to just like I say power hour it and return our house to show home worthiness and get it going again for me it just freshens up the house I know for me like a clean house means I have a great mental health particularly as I do spend a lot of time working from home if I feel it's a bit too chaotic I don't feel great and I know that affects my productivity and my mindset so I just like to reset everything on the Sunday when it comes to the house of course I know it's going to get dirty again throughout but just doing that one initial sweep just makes me feel so much more relaxed and I'm ready and raring to go so next on the agenda is batch cooking and food prepping. So this is something that usually my husband does, but I will come along and support him, particularly if I feel like making some big form of batch cooking because it's one of my favorite things to do on a Sunday. So in terms of batch cooking, what I like to do is really just absolutely go all out and create like a meal with portions for 20 people or so. And what we'll do is either have some that evening and that's what we're going to have for dinner. And then what I like to do is get these little aluminium foil trays from our local supermarket. They come with a little car lid. The way I best describe them is like, you know, if you have like a Chinese or Indian takeaway here in the UK, it's what your food comes in. They're perfect for storing in the freezer with freezer meals. So I'll make something like a chili con carne, fill it with meat, fill it with like beans, everything like that, rich tomato sauce. And I will cook it on the stove for a couple of hours. And then that will be dinner for that night. And then I'll have at least, usually it's about four weeks worth of food. So it's like two portions once a week. So that's the aim that I like to do. Put them in the little trays let them cool off and then I stick them in the fridge my goal usually during the winter time because it just gets absolutely busy and because it's dark and because it's cold no one feels like cooking really is I like to do as much batch cooking as I possibly can now and I like to have at least like three to four months worth of freezer meals I say in quotation marks in the freezer so that way if it is one of those nights where we just can't be bothered we can take one out defrost it in the air fryer and have a delicious wholesome home-cooked meal ready and raring to go now when it comes to food prep 
prepping. We're not exactly food prepping in the same way of what we're doing batch cooking. But what my husband likes to do is say, take a whole cucumber and chop it up into cucumber sticks because he knows it's one of my favorite snacks to grab and go. He'll chop up, say, the cauliflower if that's going to go into something later in the week. He'll prep the meat if it needs. He'll parboil things. He just likes to get everything ready. So again, we're just sort of taking that prep out in the evening. So once we've come back from work, you know, around six or seven o'clock in the evening, rather than having to go into full prep of chopping stuff up, we can throw things into the pan, into a saucepan, into a tray and get on cooking. Just saves time. And what it really does is take that mental load off, which I think everyone needs every now and then. Just releasing that mental load from future L and future Lee just allows us to relax a little bit more in the evening and feel like it's less of a chaotic week ahead of us. Now, this usually takes us up to about 12.30, 1pm. And we all know what that means in our house. It's dog walking time. My husband and I love just to spend quality time together with the dog and we will scoop Dash up, put him in the car and drive to one of our favourite woodland areas here in West Yorkshire. And we will take him on a massive dog walk. It's usually about one and a half, two hours long. It's a whole circuit through the woods. Dash absolutely has the whale of a time chasing squirrels, sniffing all the leaves. He just absolutely loves being out in nature. And for me and the other half, we just like throwing on our wellies, walking together. We usually chat about everything and everything. We usually have a full on life planning session on these walks. And it's just nice to get out in the fresh air, reset ourselves, check in, have that quality time whilst also allowing the dog to exercise. Now you may be thinking, well, that's all well and good, but I don't actually have a pupper to do this. I would strongly recommend taking yourself out on the Sunday just for a walk. It could be a walk around your village, a walk around your city. It may be a lovely national park nearby that you can just do a stretch, put on your headphones, listen to a great podcast, just get your steps in. There's just something about it that just recenters yourself, makes you feel good, just gets that fresh air, feeling alive again. And trust me, it helps you wind down in the evening. So I just highly recommend that lunchtime reset of just getting out in nature. And once the dog is walked, he has his long chew and is finally snoozing on his bed. Now we're into the mid-afternoon, early evening, and that usually means one thing for me. Now, currently, it's a lot of me editing content, particularly this podcast. But what I want to get myself back into the habit of doing is ironing on a Sunday. Now, I think I am the only millennial on this planet that actually enjoys ironing. Don't ask me how it happened or why it happened, but I love ironing and I'm not afraid to admit, I don't know why people don't like it. I just, there's something amazing about ironing and your clothes coming out crisp and ready and raring to go. It's like chef's kiss perfection. For me, I really do romanticize it. This is literally my ultimate boring romanticizing my life task that I like to do. What I usually do is get myself set up in front of our TV in the living room. I'll put on a Nancy Myers film, something like It's Complicated or Sink's Got to Give. It usually is a movie because it means that it's several hours rather than a TV series and I will just iron away. I will do everyone's ironing, including Lee's, including the dogs if he actually had any ironing. I just love to get through a whole laundry basket full of stuff. At the same time, I love prepping my clothes for the week ahead. So whilst I'm ironing them and hanging them up and putting them away, I'm doing a lot of other self-care stuff so you may have seen on my tiktoks about me investing in wardrobe maintenance stuff that is because i'm really starting to think about the future of my clothes so rather than buying a load of clothes all the time and contributing to fast fashion obviously it's not going to stop me buying stuff from the high street because it's affordable but what i want to do is make sure all my clothes last for a really long time so i've invested in the tools to do that and i would love to spend sundays having a routine of freshening and prepping my clothes so what does this entail? Well, I have a debobbler for all my knitwear, so vital at this time of year. So my husband has come home and caught me literally with a glass of non-alcoholic wine in my hand, debobbling like several jumpers on the sofa in front of Law and Order. And he's like, whatever throats your boat, love. But that to me is just a great little task. And my jumpers look like they're brand new from the store. I have a couple of fabric fresheners that I like to spray on freshly washed clothes and anything like jeans that I may be wearing that I don't want to wash immediately. I'll do all that. If I feel like any of my boots need a polish and a prep that is something that I will certainly incorporate on a Sunday but I want to just have a big wardrobe refresh so that my clothes are raring to go which is only going to make me feel better once I put them on and make me feel even more kick-ass for the rest of the week. Now once we've done all that and we've had our dinner it's time for evening activity which for me is the everything shower. I just love doing an absolute everything shower on a Sunday so that my body is prepped and ready to go. It's like the clothes it's just getting everything ready so that we feel better in our skin and we're ready to kick 
podcast for the rest of the week. So my everything shower doesn't include a hair wash just because I wash my hair in the morning. My hair is fine. It doesn't do well like day old hair. So for me, it's like, okay, I'll just do it then. But certainly because I have dry, dehydrated and sensitive skin, I like to get that prep so it's feeling nice and smooth. Particularly during this time of year, I will admit my skin is not having a great time. This winter, it's starting to dry out and become all crackle. It's horrible. So I really want to make sure I'm investing in my skin and making sure that it's last basically because it's the only one I'm going to have. So for me, that means obviously showering. I usually use one of my bougie shower gels, you know, for a bit of luxury. The Necessaire Eucalyptus shower gel is like an absolute spa treatment. I also have a great wash from Beauty Pie, which is really good for getting rid of red bumps and that rosacea chicken skin look. Girls who have it know exactly what I'm talking about. It's great for just smoothing out those. I'll exfoliate, I'll shave, I'll do all those things. I'll just literally head to toe, prep myself like Miss Congeliality when she's getting ready to go undercover. It's just all of that prep that I like to do for an hour or two in the evening. I'll go full on skincare. I may put a hair mask on because I'm going to be washing my hair the next day. I just like to do everything ready to feel like an absolute queen before I go to bed. And now finally, we're well and truly into the evening. And this is the one that I particularly want to change up for myself. And I feel like putting it out into the universe, I'm going to be held accountable for. So usually I am either getting into bed or spending hours on the sofa scrolling on TikTok. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, for me, it absolutely turns my brain off and I absolutely love scrolling for hours on end. But I do want to incorporate some non-technology stuff into my evening routine, particularly on a Sunday. So what I'm going to be installing is a no phone activity when I go up to bed, at least for half an hour to 45 minutes before I go to sleep. So I'm really looking to start reading again before bed, particularly on a Sunday. Or my other favourite activity that I like to do is needlepoint. Oh my God, I love needlepoint, by the way. It's absolutely fun. Could I sound any more like a 90 year old when I say that? But those are the two things that I particularly want to be starting to get into, particularly reading. I will admit I set myself a New Year's goal of reading one book a month because I'm not really a reader and I figured I used to be. I want to bring back the habit and one book a month is an easy goal to achieve. I've read a total of four books guys. This goal went down the hill but you know what? For me that is more than I read last year so I will happily take that for the win. So I really want to get back into the habit of it. And I figured dedicating a day in the week on uh, Sunday for that means I'm going to achieve that goal much quicker. And who knows, I might have more success come 2025. But the whole point of having like a no technology zone on the Sunday is obviously because studies have completely confirmed that it helps with better sleep. It helps with winding down and less mind activity, which is 100% what I need to be doing before I go to bed. So starting off small with every Sunday doing it and hopefully I will be able to take myself into doing it almost every night. I say that because we all know there's going to be a time where I'm in bed and I'm scrolling and sending TikToks to my other half like we're all human and it's absolutely fine to do that but having one day dedicated to begin with I think is going to get me in a good stance and as I said anything to make it less difficult for the week ahead and be ready and in a powerhouse move to take on the world I'm all up for it. And that is the end of our episode, a lovely short and sweet one this week, which is probably a good thing because last week's episode was a big one. But speaking on last week's episode, I really want to take the chance to thank you guys for all your support. I got some lovely comments in regards to me talking about personal finance and how refreshing it was. And I got a lot of requests in terms of individual financial episodes you would like coming up in the future. So I'm absolutely taking those on board and they will be released shortly. In speaking of episodes coming up in the future, I've got some great ones coming up, some tracks travel episodes in the not so distant future which I can't wait to bring to you guys but as always if there's a particular topic you'd like me to speak about on this podcast do leave me a comment on the show notes or dm me privately or publicly on any of my social medias I'm more than happy to take some feedback into play and as proven when you give me the feedback of what you want I make sure that it's scheduled into the plan for future episodes if you are not already subscribed to this podcast what are you doing guys come join the family honestly like after a month of launching this podcast it's going to be almost two months at this point which absolutely blows my mind I'm just grateful for the subscribers that I've already got and everybody that is streaming and downloading this podcast truly I'm so thankful and I mean you really give me a big head guys by doing this so thank you very very much for all your hard work and support with pushing me to do this podcast so I'm going to leave it there guys have a lovely rest of your week have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you guys very very soon bye
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please give me a five-star rating. For more information, you can check out my website or any of my social media platforms. Simply search An Editive Lifestyle or click on the links in the show notes below. Have a lovely week, everyone.